I have seen some rails in a bad way when out walking the track. Rail heads worn right down or covered in rolling contact fatigue. Gauge corners suffering from side wear or corrosion eating away at the rail foot. All these issues reduce the life of the rails as well as increasing the risks to the trains that run on them. Changing rails can be costly and time consuming. It's worse if you're going back to the same place time and time again changing that same length of rail. But railway engineers do have ways of combating these issues and extending the life of the rails and that is what we're going to cover in this video. By the end of this video you will know all the options available to engineers to maximise how long a rail lasts in track. You will look at how changes to the material used to manufacture the rail can do the trick, treatments that can be applied to the rails once they are made and finally how a rail that is already installed in track can be given a new lease of life. Before we dive into this video, I want to introduce you to this video's sponsor, AlphaTech High Performance Coating. AlphaTech are a leading independent specialist in thermal spray coating for a large range of applications. Their coatings protect from wear, corrosion, abrasion, high temperatures, and much more. AlphaTech's customers span a wide range of sectors and industries, including oil and gas, automotive, manufacturing, and rail. Their latest product for the railway is an absolute game changer. Switch rails are one of the most vulnerable parts of the track infrastructure, where damage and wear bring huge risks and can result in large delays to passengers. The challenge was laid down by Network Rail to AlphaTech to develop a coating to increase the life of switch blades while reducing maintenance and required interventions. AlphaTech's Hypertrax GR8 coating delivers in all these areas. On a number of trial sites it has increased the lifetime of the switch blade reduce the time to the first intervention and weld repair along with the frequency of subsequent intervention. All this reduces the cost of maintaining and repairing these switches as well as keeping railway staff safe by reducing their time on track and letting them get on with other crucial maintenance. For Network Rail, switches can now be ordered through Enroll with the Hypertrax GR8 coating already applied. Just request it in the additional information box. If you're interested in the Hypertrax GR8 coating for your switches or any other coating solution, contact AlphaTech now. Right, back to those rails we need to extend the life of. Firstly, let's just take a look at the areas that engineers might struggle with rail life and the factors that need battling. Broadly, we can group these into three categories by the cause. We have track design or geometry, the environment in which the rails are placed, then the trains using the rails, and their operation. When it comes to the track design and geometry, the area that is likely to see high rates of wear a tight radius curve, particularly side wear. The forces on rails in curves are managed across the railway with the use of cant, but tight radius curves present a challenge in that due to how tight they are, they sometimes need to be low speed, which then leads to low levels of cant, if any at all. This can lead to one rail wearing very differently to the other. They can also experience high angles of attack from the train wheel. Rolling contact fatigue is also most likely to be found on curves. The other place that the geometry can play havoc with the rail is steep gradients. These gradients require that the train uses a large amount of traction and braking force to navigate, and these forces are transferred directly through the wheel to the rail. Next is the environment in which the rails are placed. This is a particular issue for corrosion. Tunnels and level crossings are areas where rail corrosion, particularly to the foot, is common. This is due to the high levels of moisture in tunnels typically, and the exposure to water runoff from the road surface for level crossings. At level crossings there's also the issue of grit salt used during cold weather that then gets washed onto the rails and the railway. Lastly we have the trains. A rail would remain in near perfect condition for a very long period of time if trains didn't run on it, but then what's the point in having them in the first place? Freight trains, being heavier by their nature, exact a greater toll on the rails than passenger trains. Tracks that see a greater proportion of freight traffic tend to experience higher rates of wear. Linking trains to the track geometry is the operational impact. Stopping and slowing at signals changes how train wheels interact with the rail. A curve may be designed for the full line speed, but trains frequently stopping at a signal on the middle of the curve. There may be a curve designed for the full line speed, but in reality, trains are frequently stopping at a signal on the middle of the curve. While running below line speed or stationary, the loading on the low or inner rail is increased. So, now we know the areas that engineers may look for different solutions to help prevent high rates of wear and damage to the rails. Let's dive into some of the solutions on offer. Rail grade. First up, we have changes to the material that the rails are made of. Rails are made of steel, which is an alloy or mixture of iron and carbon with other elements added in if required. This leads to thousands of combinations and therefore types of steel. There is a range of steel types that meet the standard for use in rail. This has led to what is known as rail grades, which refer to the hardness of the steel and therefore the rail. Rail grades in the UK and Europe are expressed as a number, and this number is the hardness of the steel on the Brunel scale. 
Hardness is the resistance of the material to being deformed. In many countries, 260 is the standard grade used in mainline track. Does anyone know how rail grades are expressed elsewhere in the world? Well, let me know down in the comments. If rail wear and life are an issue, going for a harder steel may be the answer. One of the ways to increase the rail hardness is to change the chemical makeup of the steel by changing the carbon content or by adding additional elements such as chromium. When this is done, the letters from the periodic table from the added elements and then put at the end of the rail grade. So 370CR rail has a hardness of 370 and has chromium added. That brings us quickly on to another way to increase rail hardness, heat treatment. When the rails are manufactured, there is a lot of heat involved. Steel is heated to allow the correct profile of the rail to be formed. Heat treatment refers to controlling the rate at which the metal cools. Often heat treatment involves speeding up the rate of cooling. This achieves a certain microstructure within the metal that is harder and therefore more resistant to wear. Another way to achieve the same result is to reheat a newly manufactured rail and then control its cooling rate. When a rail has been heat treated, the suffix HT is often added to the name, such as 350HT. So if harder, more resistant rails are available, why are they not used everywhere? It mainly comes down to cost. Heat treated rails are more expensive. With standard rails being suitable for a large majority of the rail network, it's just not economical to install heat treated rails everywhere. These rails with higher hardness values, whether achieved through changes to the steel composition or heat treatment, are generally known as higher grade or premium steel rails. Commonly these rails are used on those tight radius curves or high wear switches we spoke about earlier. Apart from changing the type of steel or giving it some heat treatment, how else can a rail be manufactured to protect it from life as part of the railway track? The answer is coatings. A coating provides a barrier between the steel of the rail and the environment it's placed in. Coatings are a very common way to protect materials. You can probably look around where you are now and see multiple examples. The paint on your car is a great one. Primarily used to prevent the corrosion of the rail, particularly the foot. Coated rails are often installed within tunnels and level crossing or other wet areas such as coastal routes. They may also be used in areas where other substances could damage the rails, such as yards handling chemicals. Coating of the rail does present one problem, and that is welding the rails together. Often the coating has to be removed to allow the welding to be undertaken, which then leaves an area of rail exposed without any protection from the coating. As you saw earlier in the video, our sponsor AlphaTech has introduced a coating that helps prevent wear on switches. This opens up the application of coatings to beyond their traditional use to prevent corrosion. Coatings and higher grade rail are all good options for engineers when they're looking to replace rails. But what can they do if the rail is already installed and they can see it wearing quickly? Before we jump into that, I just wanted to say that if you're interested in railway engineering, then I have a free PDF guide that might interest you. Kant is one of the most fundamental rail engineering concepts, and I cover it in depth in my free guide to Kant PDF. You can get your copy at the link in the top right now or the description below. Back to the options engineers have if the rail is already installed. Well, the first option is lubrication. Train wheels are metal and so are the rails, both hard materials. The interaction between the two of them causes a level of friction that then leads to wear. Some areas, such as tight radius curves we spoke about earlier, have high levels of friction and therefore high levels of wear. The use of lubrication is a well understood and used method of reducing friction and wear across many industries, and the railway is no different. Lubrication can also reduce the speed at which rolling contact fatigue and other defects propagate or spread. Installing mechanisms that allow train wheels to pick up the lubricant as they pass through and then carry it through the curve is a cheaper alternative than redesigning the track, which might not even be possible. These are known as lubricators. I have a full video that discusses plain line lubrication that goes into much more detail. Do check it out. It's linked in the top right hand corner now and in the description below. So what happens when the rail is worn or suffering from a surface defect? As is often the way, once a rail is suffering from wear, which leads to it performing suboptimally, the rate of wear increases. The wear then worsens and the cycle repeats. This is because friction increases as the interaction between the wheel and the rail changes as the rail wears. It is the same with defects. Once they are present, they tend to spread or grow quicker and quicker the longer they are left alone. The answer is rail grinding. This second option for engineers to extend the life of existing rails is very well used across the world. It involves using specifically designed trains to grind the rails back to the correct profile. Yes, the rail is reduced ever so slightly in size as grinding removes material but it is the correct shape again. This improves the wheel-rail interaction and reduces the friction. Grinding can also remove or reduce surface defects such as RCF. Through the use of grinding trains, large areas can be covered. High-speed rail grinders can work up to 62 miles an hour or 100 kilometers an hour, although they may have to take it slower on sites with heavy wear. 
There is a further and more severe version known as milling that removes even more material from the railhead. This is very effective at removing deeper surface defects. Engineers have a number of options available to them, both for when they are looking to install new rails or keep the rails in the track going for longer. Extending and maximising rail life is really important to keep trains moving and costs down. On screen now is another video I think you'll enjoy, as well as the latest upload from the P-Way engine. I hope you found this video useful. Don't forget to give it a like, comment any questions and hit that subscribe button.